This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. You see I got my truck right here parked in this driveway. We're actually painting this house and I've been getting a lot of questions about overspray and what about getting the overspray on the vehicles? What about getting overspray on the plants and everything? So today I purposely parked my beautiful truck right here in the driveway. We're spraying the gutters, we're spraying the garage doors, we're spraying the stucco. I've never had a claim in the 13 to, I don't know, 15, 13 to 15 years that I've actually had my painting company. Never once had a claim with overspray or a complaint with overspray getting on plants or getting on other vehicles and stuff. So my vehicle is parked right here in the driveway. It's been cleanly washed and detailed or recently washed and detailed. And I'm gonna show you that there's actually no overspray on it after painting here all day long and I'll discuss a little bit why I think you're uh, thinking that overspray is getting on things or if you're a painter why you're actually getting overspray on a lot of stuff there could be some reasons why and I'll tell you why we don't actually get overspray on anything but the house once again I purposely parked my truck here on another house we're actually doing a solid color stain on this house and we got John spraying here and got a slight breeze outside you might be able to even hear it on the microphone but we're going to be painting here I'm going to show you that we're not getting any overspray on my nice white truck in the driveway This is Brooke from b and Ping, and I'm about to give you guys some top secret footage from behind the scenes of all the employees here. Will you say that this is your dream job or the job to get to the dream job? This is a stepping stone. What is your dream job? President of the United States. How achievable do you think that is? <laughs> Describe your odds. And if I graduate college, 50-50? Have you ever found that this job was dangerous? Very. You know, what was the most dangerous moment, like most scared moment you have been? Uh, I almost fell <laughs> off the ladder the other day. So he's just got done spraying the front of this garage right here in the siding and here's a look at the there's no overspray on the truck whatsoever i'll give you a closer look at it here in just a second but he's got this whole side sprayed around the corner sprayed and there's actually no overspray on the vehicle no overspray on the bumper down here we sprayed it with gray woodscapes here's my white vehicle and truck and there actually goes the sprayer johnny so I still Johnny have a boy. job? <laughs> <laughs> he, John still has a job because he didn't destroy my vehicle with overspray. <laughs> How long have you been working for Green Cape Ah, I don't remember like five years. Five? Almost, yes. Okay. What's your spirit animal? Hmm? What's your spirit animal? Musking. <laughs> Masking. <laughs> So now that we're done spraying this front of this and I've showed you that there's no overspray on my vehicle, showed you a couple incidences while we're spraying the front of a house and a light wind that there's no overspray. I'll give you a couple simple tips on how not to get overspray on vehicles or plants and stuff. And one of them is actually the pressure that your sprayer set at. If the pressure's too high, you're 
gonna have more overspray typically than you would. So you need the proper pressure for the proper tip. And then also your tips, if your tips are worn out, it's gonna cause a lot of overspray too. We typically use a tip for no more than probably 50, 60 gallons. And once, once the tip gets blown out or is used too much, you're gonna get a lot of overspray because it's not atomizing properly and the droplets are too big. And so you get a lot of fallout and overspray from worn tips. And that's probably the, the most common cause of overspray getting on stuff and getting a lot of fallout is worn tips. So we're typically going through quite a few tips. It's a cheap expense to not have a lot of overspray and your paint will go a lot farther when you're getting the proper atomization and not overusing your tips. So probably 50 to 60 gallons and then we're, which is just a couple houses. So we're using a new tip every two to three houses more than likely. Now this is the, the pressure, the, the sprayer. We're typically running on the exterior a 515 tip at around 2200 to 2300 PSI. If you're running 3000 PSI or more, you're gonna get a lot of overspray. Of course, wind is gonna cause overspray, so you gotta you know, be conscious of the wind. And then we're also using cardboard shields. You're, you're seeing John or who's ever spraying using cardboard shields, and that's gonna limit your overspray too. You gotta use cardboard shields so you don't get overspray. And those are probably the most common things. You're uh, old tips, too much pressure, and not using cardboard shields. Do those things and you shouldn't have any overspray getting on any vehicles because I haven't had an overspray claim since I've been in business, nor had any complaints from customers. We'll show you a quick example of actually working around a corner because one place where you're going to get overspray is the overspray whipping around a corner, but we'll show John will actually use a cardboard shield and that is one, one example of how you control your overspray with a cardboard shield. Where do you get um, the seeds to plant a seedless watermelon? Do they grow like potatoes where you like... I don't know. Do they grow like potatoes where you like bud them or something? You like plant part of them, you know? And then they just grow off that? Here's another example of using a cardboard shield to limit the overspray coming out when you're actually spraying a soffit. When it comes to the overspray too, I got another tip for you, and that's actually keeping your filters clean on your gun and on your sprayer. And if your filters are really dirty and clogged, what it's actually gonna do is actually gonna lower the pressure. So you're not gonna have too much pressure, but you're gonna have too low of a pressure. So the paint's not gonna get atomized properly and you're gonna get heavy droplets coming out of your spray gun. And the heavy droplets are gonna cause a lot more fallout and to, and a lot more overspray. So make sure your gun filters and your pup filters clean also. But he rides up on his little Harley every day. There he is. We have some questions for him. Uh, would you like to audition to be on a video? <laughs> I don't know. Depends what it is. Um, what's your name? Greg. Do you like your name? Yeah. Yeah, you do? Yeah. Um, would, could, if you change it, could change it, would you? or? Probably not. No, you really like it? Well, I'd have to get used to a new name, so yeah. too much effort. And when we do the gutters, you can actually see we're using cardboard shields up in the gutters to help control any of the overspray going up in the air that actually carry around and actually land on any plants or vehicles or even get on the roof. So that's another quick tip, uh, actually uh, keeping overspray off things you don't want it to be on. See, I'm inside his garage, just walked out. This is how close my vehicle is and see there's no overspray on this vehicle at all. Get a close up look here. The window, the bumper, no overspray. Okay, do you yeah. have any babies? I do have babies. I can't tell the difference if they're muffins or babies anyway, so oh. okay. piece of cake. Okay. Thank you. That's right here, I got a vehicle inside. I've got some questions, people wondering what about the overspray on the vehicles inside. We're gonna show you when these garage doors are closed, no overspray whatsoever goes inside the garage, so you don't need to worry about that either. So here we go. So here we go, got my sprayer set up. 
We're spraying it uh, the, with the airless sprayer. It's at 2200 PSI. Got my truck right here, my beautiful white truck right there. And you're gonna see there's no overspray on it when we're done here. <laughs> Now we've already sprayed the top of the house, but we got the garage door sprayed, and that was, the sprayer was set at 2200 PSI. We're using a 515 tip with this extension one, and now I'll show you, I'm gonna open the garage door, we'll show you the vehicle right behind the garage door that has no overspray on it, and we'll show you my truck that has no overspray on it. It's the vehicle right here that's parked right in the garage. I'll give you a close-up view. Hopefully it focuses on that. You can see it. There's obviously no overspray on it. We'll swing right over here. And here's my truck. And it's been a few minutes. Plenty of time for any type of overspray or fallout to get on my truck if it was going to. And you can see there I have a truck. You can see the black bumper. It's a light color so it'd show up really easily on the bumper. It would show up on the window and there's no overspray and we've actually sprayed this garage and sprayed these gutters front of the house everything with my truck right in the way what would you say if he gave you a ring and it was only a hundred dollar ring well i would i mean i'm that's not really ever going to happen because if i get married i'm going to pick out the ring so once again md the, to control your overspray, what it really comes down to is actually controlling your overspray with cardboard shields, with pressure, with cleaning your your gun filters and pump filters and not spraying on windy days. Those are some of the things that could actually cause overspray issues. But you know, if you got the experience, you're not gonna get overspray on anything, even if it's within 500 or five feet. Hey, don't leave now. I've got two more videos for you to watch. A really cool one right up here, how to stain a fence. I got another cool video right over here, how to roll a wall. Just click on those videos and you can watch them. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button right here. It's free. And thank you for watching my videos.